Hello everyone, today I'll be teaching you guys how to solve the, ge the geodesic equation for a Cartesian space. So, this video is going to be really, really easy to follow. The math is not really hard for this simple case. Um, the reason I'm making this video is to show anyone that is that has some doubts about how this e how this equation works. Um, like, how it actually works. Like, how, how we solve it in practice. So, yeah. And we are going to do that for the simple case of a plane. Okay. So. So first of all, notation. Um, I have so, so so I have some variable u, i. Okay, or just u raised to the any variable. Now, u i just means x if i equals one. It means y if i equals two. Okay. And the Cartesian plane is defined. Um, well, the, the Cartesian plane is just, is just um, just yeah, x y, just all the points x y makes up the plane, right? Um, it's the one that we learned from fifth grade. This one over here. So what what we are going to do today is we are, we are going to solve for the ge for the geodesics for the geodesics along um, this plane. Now, first of all, what is a geodesic? A geodesic, well, um, to put it in the mathematically um, true sense, it's just a path, a path um, where the second derivative of the of the position vector dotted with the derivative of the position vector along the path lambda equals zero. In the simplified sense, in the simplified sense, it's basically the straightest possible possible path between two points. But in the mathematically rigorously true sense, this is what a geodesic is. Um, so yeah, when I say geodesic, just think about the straightest distance, um, the straightest path, I'm sure distance, the straightest path between two points. So, well, along the manifold. Along the manifold. So, say I, say I have a sphere, right? And I have two points on the sphere. The straightest path would, would just be a great circle, right? I can't go through the sphere. Because we, we, we only care about the surface, the manifold um, itself. Or, or like in the topo topological sense. We only care about the sphere of the sphere. Um, so see, we had some, um, I guess, some cone. The geodesics would look some, something like this, right? But if I had a plane, like the Cartesian plane, the geodesics will look um, like straight lines, right? Since the shortest distance between, sorry, the shortest path between two points would would, would just be a straight line. So when we solve the geodesic ge ge e equation, we should we should just get a path for a straight line. Now, there are two ways to go about this. We can solve it for the general flat space case, or we can solve it for the Cartesian case. I want to solve for, for the for the Cartesian for the Cartesian um, space because it, it looks more like how you would solve it for like spheres and like movies, ships, and, and stuff like that. So, I'm going to solve it for the for, for Cartesian coordinates, but you could solve it for polar coordinates, um, cylindrical, cylindrical coordinates, or, or the general flat coordinates. But yeah, I'll, I'll, be solving it for, I'll be solving it for that case, but it will it would look similar to any other case that's flat. So yeah, let's begin. So, to solve it, we first need to actually know what um, the metric tensor components are so here we see the metric tensor components okay now we know um that the metric tensor for Cartesian coordinates is just um one zero zero one the identity matrix by definition right um so the inverse of this tensor would would just be um one over the determinant of the tensor times um like you would have to um, i believe flip these around 
and 0, 0, 1. And 1 over the determinant of this tensor is just 1. So the inverse of the, of the tensor is just the same um, tensor. It doesn't change at all, right? Um, so yeah, these, these, so this would just be the product for delta, um, LK, since that's what the metric tensor is for Cartesian coordinates, okay? But honestly, we don't really need to go through much work to calculate all of these symbols, right? Since you since recall that the Carcello symbols measure the rate of change of, um, of your basis vectors along your space, so... And this over here, basically, it, it's saying that, that you have, it, it's asking for the rate of change for some uh, basis vector along some, like, coordinate direction. And if you don't know what this, this symbol means, check my vectors as derivatives video. I made it, like, a while back to, 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 to understand what this means. But it's basically, basically a basis vector, okay? And note that for Cartesian uh, coordinates, your basis doesn't change at all, right? So your basis is just partial r over partial, over partial x and partial r over, over partial y. And your basis doesn't actually change. Like, like it's the same throughout, right? They're, like, they're, like, they're always orthogonal. Like, they don't stretch or compress. They're constant, which means that all of these symbols will go to zero. Um, or I should probably make, write, write that whole thing again. Or, or just copy and paste it, really. So I hope that makes sense. You could, of course, like, calculate the explicit um, Christoffel symbols, but you don't have to go through all that effort, right? Since the degree of change over basis vectors will just um, come out as null, as zero. So all of our symbols um, come down to zero. So, th so this makes this entire part of the equation that causes ca that causes us the most stress go away. That's why it's really easy to solve for this case. Because all we have to solve now is this simple um, second order homogeneous differential e equation, which is like, yeah, really easy to solve. So here we k can take on two variables. It can be one or two. Um, for the case where k equals one, we'd have second derivative of um, um, u. Oh, I should probably say I specified this at the start. Oh, I, oh, I, I did do that. I did. Like basically, um, x equals u and y equals v, pretty much. So we'd have u equals zero. And then we'd have second derivative of v would also be zero. Okay. Note that these are functions of lambda. So we could just change this. Um, since u equals x and v equals y. Changes the second derivative of x with, with, with respect to lambda is zero. Same thing with y. Okay, then we we integrate this one time to get the second derivative of x or, or the first derivative of x with with respect to lambda. So what's the integral of zero? The integral the integral of zero would just be a constant c. Integrate that again, we get um c lambda plus another constant. So let's call this c one. Let's call this one c two. Similarly, y would just be, um, I guess you could say, k1 lambda plus k2. These are just equations for straight lines, right? Oops, sorry, that was an accident. These are just equations for straight lines. Like, remember from, cal um, from, not calculus, from algebra, we had y equals mx plus b, right? And well, this is that's what that's what we have here, uh, kind of like here's our um slope, here's our starting point, um. So yeah, so we could really just relabel this as x lambda equals like c one lambda plus the starting x value. Same thing with y, and yeah, these just give us equations for um straight lines. Here's x. Yeah. And the, that these are the geodesics along our space, and they give us straight lines because because which align with our intuition. So now I want to focus on the reason, like why do we study geodesics? What's the reason for it? 
Well, I come from a, a physics background, and I'm sure that there are some, like, engineering applications, um, like, when, when we can account for the curvature of the Earth and stuff. But my reason, I guess you could say, is um, space-time is curved, right? Like, space-time is curved. And the the path that objects take through space-time will just be the geodesics when there are no forces on space-time. So if you want to know the path that an object will take when it falls down to Earth, you need to solve the, the, the geodesic equation for um, for that um, space-time. Um, you, could, you could also derive the, the geodesic equation um, from the Lagrangian for space-time. Um, but you could also derive it from the definition for the equation. But I won't, I won't be driving it today. Maybe next time, but yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys um, understood that. Oops. Bit in the past. I hope you guys understood that video. Um, so yeah, have an amazing day.